Hello and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT How to Play video. Today our analysts will be diving into how to play Draconic for patch 1120. This will be our final how to play video for set 5 and in the spirit of this patch, we're breaking down one of the most fun builds, Draconic. Draconic received multiple buffs in patch 1120, so be sure to check out the patch notes for everything changed. With that, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Before we dive into the in and outs of Draconic, let's first explore the question, why play Draconic? There's a few answers to this question with the most recent reason being the buffs Draconic received in 1120. They increased the quality of drops per egg and added a lot of high roll possibilities. Basically, Draconic has insane potential, though it still relies heavily on luck. Another reason to play Draconic is the composition isn't all that bad. There's a ton of volatility, sure, but when a player gets a perfect egg drop and suddenly has a Heimerdinger 2 at level 7, it's quite likely they will finish in the top 4. Does that mean there's a lot of high rolling involved? Of course. That's part of the fun of playing Draconic, and that fits with the theme of 1120. And finally, as we mentioned, the best reason to play Draconic is, in fact, to have fun. The end of set 5 is near, and while some players will continue to grind rank to get higher on the ladder, a lot of players just want to sit back and relax. Draconic is the perfect synergy for that, as it will provide a lot of dopamine when a golden egg pops out and suddenly you're inundated with gold and multiple Heimerdingers. Overall, if you're wanting to play the best possible composition for patch 1120, Draconic may not be for you. If you're looking to have a fun game every once in a while, then we recommend trying this composition. Let's move on to the actual composition by first considering the core items for Draconic. Draconic is rather unique in that there's multiple potential carries available, while also being a base synergy for other compositions like Abomination or Ranger. There's no definitive way to run Draconic as it mostly comes down to early game timings and, well, luck. That said, there are three potential carries that we can talk about in regards to Draconic. Those three are Ash, Heimerdinger, and Set. Zyra is also a viable option, but generally is used as an item holder for Heimerdinger. Belkaz is playable as well, but that enters the territory of Abomination. Of course, for all these AP carries, the items are practically the same, so whether you end up with Heimerdinger, Zyra, Velkaz, or even Teemo, the chances are whatever items you have for them are transferable. Of the three carries we want to talk about, the least viable is Set. One Punch Man had his heyday a long time ago in Set 5 and hasn't really recovered since then. But there has been a minor resurgence after Set received a few buffs and, of course, the most recent Draconic changes in 1120. We won't cover this variation too much, but the gist of it is items like Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, and a defensive item. This provides a decent chunk of damage for Set and keeps him alive long enough to continually punch his way to victory. Ash and Heimerdinger are actually viable in the meta, especially after both champions have been buffed in recent patches. The goal for these two carries is quite different as Ash is a level 7 reroll composition, while Heimerdinger is a push level 9 for a capped board type of comp. When it comes to items, AD helps Ash a lot, but the best carry item by far is Rageblade. This is true for any ranger carry, but Rageblade helps with scaling in a fight. It also pairs nicely with the ranger attack speed buff since attack speed has crazy good scaling the higher it goes. Besides Rageblade, Ash has a few options. Damage is definitely important, so items like Deathblade, Giant Slayer, and Infinity Edge are the most common. With the second Radiant Armory being introduced in 1120, it is possible to wait and see if you can procure a damage Radiant item. The main risk of this is that by the time 5-1 rolls around, you want to already have hit your power spike, and to do that, you need three items on Ash. It is a risk to wait, but hey, Draconic is all about living dangerously. Other items to consider for Ash are Shojin, Hand of Justice, and any defensive item that keeps her alive. Shojin synergizes amazingly with Rageblade, and eventually Ash can perma-stun the enemy champions. In addition to Ash items, utility items like Banshee's Claw and Zeke's are great for buffing Ash while also aiding your secondary carry. Generally, the secondary carry is another ranger like Aphelios or Akshan. Heimerdinger is much simpler in terms of items since the AP options are relatively limited. Shojin, Deathcap, Jeweled Gauntlet, and Archangel Staff are almost always the items you want to see on Heimerdinger and other AP champs. Shojin is essential, so be sure to have at least that item, otherwise Heimerdinger will take forever to cast. And then there's general defensive items to give to your frontline, generally Galio, though late game revenants are also common. For emblems, Draconic opens the door for 5 Draconic to replace Udyr, and Ranger is great for pivoting into 4 Rangers with Ash Carry. With items done, let's move on to the core champions and traits for Draconic. Since there's multiple variations, we're going to simplify this section and focus on Ash and Heimerdinger boards. Rather than the goal is the same. 
Run at least three Draconic, though five Draconic is ideal in the mid game to maximize your egg drops. Galio is almost always the preferred frontliner for any Draconic board, though set three is also common. Ash compositions focus on Ranger, either two or four. Having a secondary Ranger not only buffs Ash, but also provides a secondary carry, since Ash on her own isn't enough damage in the late game. At level eight, an Ash Draconic board to aim for is Ash, Aphelios, Galio, Set, Rel, Nautilus, and either Mystic or two additional Rangers. It mostly depends on what you hit when rolling at level seven or eight, but four Rangers is the more common pivot at level eight. It's also fine to drop Draconic once you've hit Ash three, so replace Set with any frontliner, whether that's Revenants or more Knights. Four Knights complements a Ranger backline quite well, but it mainly depends on whether you've hit upgraded Revenants or upgraded Knights. The two best Mystics for Ranger are Lulu and Gwen, both of which provide good buffs to your backline. Heimerdinger boards often want to be capped at level 9, but keep in mind that this can be difficult to do. That said, at level 9, aim for a board like Heimerdinger Ivern, Volibear, Fiddlesticks, Teemo, Gwen, and Galio. Additional champions can either be more Draconic units, Ironclad with Rel Nautilus, or extra Mystics if the lobby is AP heavy. Four Invoker is also a common way to play Heimerdinger late game, so add Syndra and Karma alongside Teemo plus Ivern. As we said, Heimerdinger can be difficult to play late game because of how expensive the board is. The key thing is to have Invoker, Revenant Frontline, and Heimer too. Everything else is situational, so don't fret too much about hitting every single five cost champion. Overall, we could go on and on about the variations of Draconic. The thing to take away is to run at least three Draconic, a solid Frontline, and any splash traits that aid your main carry. Now we can move into the different stages of the game, beginning with the early game. The opening carousel priority can vary depending on your game plan with Draconic, but aiming for either a sword, rod, tier, or belt is often the best bet. These components cover a wide range of potential items. And if you're really unsure of what to grab, belt is the best as it leaves you with the most options early game. We're going to preface this entire section by saying Draconic is extremely volatile. The way to reduce randomness of Draconic is to have the trait active as early as possible, but even then, what eggs you get are going to determine how well the game goes for you. As such, we don't recommend forcing Draconic past stage 2 if you don't have the trait already active. It's also risky to do it past 2-3, but as long as you hit the champion sometime in stage 2, Draconic is playable. With that said, there's two main ways to run Draconic early game. Open forwarding to intentionally lose streak to maximize the gold gained or force leveling to increase the odds of your eggs having better drops. The more common route is to go on a loss streak because most Draconic boards are quite weak unless you've hit multiple upgrades. This should guarantee you priority on Carousel while giving you an efficient amount of gold for Stage 3. The other option is to force leveling, which is different from normal leveling. We're talking about hitting level 5 on 2-3 and 6 on 3-1, or even level 7 by 3-3 or 3-5. Aggressively leveling helps Draconic because your board has more units on it, shoring up the weaknesses of Draconic units. But it also means when your better eggs hatch, they have a higher chance at being good drops. Whichever playstyle you go for, keep in mind that there is always an inherent risk to running Draconic. If you get bag egg drops, or don't activate the synergy early enough, or just low roll your stage 2 and 3, then the game is likely doomed. That's the volatility of Draconic, so be aware of the risk before playing it. With that, we can move into the mid game where Draconic hits its stride. Level 6 and Stage 3 should be around the time you're hitting upgrades on your board like Ash 2 and Set 2. It's also when Galio is more likely to show up, though it is possible to high roll him at level 5. Galio opens the door for 5 Draconic, which you ideally want to have in Stage 3, so your eggs pop up in Stage 4. Stage 4 is where the real fun happens with Draconic because level 7 means Heimerdinger can show up. It also increases the potential drops for your eggs, assuming they aren't the tiny Round 1 eggs. Stage 4 is where your board should come together and the value of Draconic should kick in since you'll have more gold than other players. Eggs can also mean things like Components or Nico's help, all of which increase the value of your board. Be aware of the potential pivots into Stage 4 as well. Rangers of the Felios carry is the perfect transition from Ash, and Velkaz is a great pivot from an early AP Draconic board. Ideally, you do want Heimerdinger, but Velkaz works well enough. There aren't too many great pivots out of Draconic, as most of them end up just being Heimerdinger or Ranger boards. It's just important to know your potential outs if Draconic isn't going well in Stage 4. And now for the late game. A cap Draconic board is scary good, especially with 5 Draconic because at level 8 and 9, the potential egg drops are massive. It's not uncommon to have a bunch more items than other players at this stage of the game, as well as far more expensive champions. For Ash boards, you need to have hit Ash 3 by Stage 5, Ideally, you want to have hit it sometime in Stage 4. 
Ash will fall off, so you need to three-star her to begin leveling to eight as soon as possible. Heimerdinger boards mostly just require you to hit Heimerdinger 2, so leveling to 8 in Stage 5 is the plan. Overall, the late game isn't all that special for Draconic. The main difference Draconic has compared to other compositions is a capped level 9 Draconic board is generally a lot stronger than other boards. Plus, you can hit that cap a lot sooner with the increased amount of gold gained from eggs. The key aspect to running Draconic is the early and mid game. Recognizing when you have to pivot or when to roll and level will help you out far more than anything you do in the late game beyond basic scouting and positioning. Improve your early Draconic for a better late game. And that's it for today, folks. Draconic is a ton of fun to play when it goes well. Just keep in mind what we've been repeating over and over again is that the synergy is highly volatile. That means not every game is a Draconic game. Let us know in the comment section below what variation of Draconic is your favorite. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.